All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video is gonna be a little bit different than most of the other videos, but y'all just bear with me. I wanna bring Hannah in and she's back off at college. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and FaceTime her and bring her in on the conversation. So y'all bear with me for just one second while we get her on the horn. All right, and we got Hannah with us. Hi guys. Welcome in Hannah. So we had the hunt that was in uh, January. I think it was actually January 26th. We were back at uh, CDLC and blind number seven and a half. The, the previous couple of weeks, we had seen a real nice mature eight point buck that we were after. And we were looking for that eight mature eight or a different buck. And we had a buck that came in and he was a real nice buck. So tell us about that. So initially we thought he was a 10 point, but after looking closer, we saw that he had two very small kickers. additions. Yeah, we'll call them kickers. kickers. I was very excited when I first saw this deer. Um, I really wanted to shoot it. After talking to the other guys, dad kind of decided it was not the best idea because the deer had better chances of just basically he was future. yeah basically he was too young to shoot. And uh, I, I'll tell you right now, it was one of the most difficult things that I've had to do is is not giving her the green light on that deer because it was a really nice buck. Anyway, he came in, he posed for us just beautifully. 12 the yards. Time, he was standing in the perfect shooting lane and then he moved to the other. He was just always where we, I needed. He had come in uh, a couple of different hunts the week before this hunt. And so we ended up finishing that hunt. You shot a doe on, on Sunday morning after before we left. And then now we're back again for another hunt. We're looking for one of these mature eights. Primarily Tank is what we call him. He's a real nice buck and so we were there on a friday afternoon it was right after we got there you and i went to the blind back to seven and a half and then tell me what happened there well, it was pretty early in the hunt and the big 10 point with kickers came out and he was standing there and of course i had my bow ready and i knew i wasn't supposed to shoot him but i was just like just sitting there bugging my dad like come on let me shoot him are you sure i can't shoot him yeah so the whole time she's lobbying me that she wants to shoot this deer. And she's just, I mean, literally in my ear, giving me all the reasons why I should let her shoot this deer. I was updating the website. I was sending pictures via text to our friends. Hannah was talking to me in my ear. And then all of a sudden, I just happened to look up and look out her other window. And there is a good mature eight point buck that was there. Hannah couldn't even see him yet. She thought I was teasing her. And I, and I told her, I said, holy crap, you're gonna shoot that buck. What were you thinking at that point? It was kind of like I knew it was coming because when you looked up, I was like, he's about to tease me. He's going to do something just to make make me get excited. And then when you did it, I, I didn't see the buck. And you were like, you're going to shoot this buck. And I, was, I hadn't even seen the buck yet. And I just got ready. I didn't really think about what if this buck isn't as nice. Like, I was just ready to shoot the buck. Once the buck got into my shooting lane, I didn't really look at him. I was just super excited to shoot, focusing on my aiming point. <laughs> All right, so we're going to pick it up with that and let you join us inside the blind. Uh, there's some audio that's in there, and we're going to hopefully, um, you can hear kind of our uh, back and forth uh, from the blind. We'll pick it up, and then as soon as the hunt's over, we'll come back and we'll give a little bit further explanation and some more details about how it turned out.
Let's go investigate what we got in here. Look right there on that grass. Right where? Basically that grass, there's some grass, tuft of grass right here or something. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But it looks like pretty good blood. Blood, blood, blood. Is there blood on any of these trees? What are you seeing on the arrow? Blood, blood, the blood. Okay, let's take a look at it. Does it look like dark blood, lung blood? Mm -mm, it looks like light blood. Okay. What do you think? Yep, I think it looks good. Okay, my, the tip of my arrow is about to get shot. Got lots of blood, so. This is looking up. This is looking. Does that mean he laid down and got back up? That looks like dark blood. Is that dark blood? All right, so quick update on where we are. Um, so we gave it about 45 minutes after the shot and um, we got on blood immediately and we followed the trail and it was a good stand up walking blood trail. It looked like a pretty good blood. And then we came to us, we found the arrow. Yeah. Um, the arrow had a lot of blood on it as well. And then we got to a spot that it looked like maybe the deer had bedded down, uh, laid down or stopped. And then, uh, so we, we kind of checked it. it. Looked like there may be some lung blood in there. And um, anyway, we, we found another couple of spots after that down a trail and then it just disappeared. So Hannah and I kind of went back and forth down different trails looking, see what we could find, hands and knees. We found one little, very small spot. Tiny. So we decided to back out <clears throat> and get tracking help Came back here to camp, which is where we are now, and then we just decided to go ahead and make the call uh, and call Roy Hines, who's uh, obviously the most famous deer tracker in the uh, in the state, for sure, if not the country, if not the world. So anyway, Roy and his son John are on the way here now. We're going to grab a quick bite to eat. As soon as they get here, uh, we're going to put his dogs on the trail. I'm still pretty confident. The shot was a little far back, a little low, but I'm pretty confident that we'll find it. But rather than taking a bunch of people out there and messing the trail up and then trying to get the dogs on it, we just decided to go ahead and, and, uh, and make the call, get Roy out here. He's as good as they come. He's a great guy. He's been out here several times. Uh, Roy is just a great guy. And then uh, we'll get him on, on the trail and we'll be right back to show you the results of that. He's been 120 yards my left. He's been 150 yards up, up in front of me. He's been 120 yards to my right. 
man. He's been everywhere. I, I don't know that you could get outside that circle and do any good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right, so that's kind of where we ended things uh, with the filming. Unfortunately, they weren't able to find it. I want to know, Hannah, what are some of the things that uh, that you were thinking about as that deer was there and you're getting ready to take the shot? So, like I mentioned before, I really wasn't focused on the deer very much. We had just seen him for a few seconds, but I was I was very confident. I was excited. Initially, when I drew back. I noticed that a limb had fallen down because I think the week before we had rearranged some stuff so that we could see the shooting lane was better and we just didn't notice because when I pull back I sit up a little bit so I hadn't noticed it would, that it would be there whenever we, I shot. So I, I noticed it and I had to kind of bend down a little bit I guess in the shooting in my shooting stance and if you're listening in the video, Dad tells me if I need to look down to look down, but I was pretty confident in my shot. We th both thought you made a great shot on it. I mean, we it, the shot felt good, right? We were excited. We were really pumped up. Very excited. And just to clarify, I don't think the limb, I don't, it, it, the arrow didn't clip the limb, so that no, that didn't cause didn't. any issue. But if anything, just the, the little bit changing your form a little bit, maybe having to, to kind of slump down just a little bit to squeeze it under there might have affected a little bit. So another one of the things that um, I mentioned to her, and I'll take this on myself a little bit, if we go back to the first doe that Hannah shot, um, she she hit it in the back strap and fortunately it came back in. And so we talked about a deer ducking and especially the does, the does will duck a lot. So I told her to aim really low, kind of almost to the body line of the deer. And then she made a perfect shot on it, hit it heart shot deer ran fell in sight if you haven't seen that video we'll post a link to it up there but anyway so um, one of the things that I mentioned to her as she drew back I said low behind the shoulder the shot was obviously far farther back than what we wanted but um, with it that far back and low I think that's really what complicated things and I think that was just um, that's a learning experience in itself is a, a buck is just not going to duck as much as a doe does um, and that was on my fault for I don't think we had that discussion let's go to after the shot and we watched the video and we both thought yep we saw that it was a little back once we watched the video saw it in slow motion you heard me say it was a little back in the video but um, we initially thought it had hit the lungs still we thought it was further back but still clipped the lungs which is a deadly shot yeah we thought we thought worst case we, we got liver um, we decided we were going to give it a little extra time, so we gave it about 45 minutes. So we had plenty of time before it got dark, but then we decided we wanted to go and find the trail, uh, at least get on it and inspect the blood, see if we could find the arrow and get on it before dark. We went and, and found blood. We thought it was really good blood. I thought it was really good blood. Um, it didn't look overly dark, and so I wasn't too concerned. I thought it, w it was going to be a dead deer. I actually let Hannah take the, the lead on the trail. It was it was pretty much stand-up walking blood trail that we like, and so I was worried about operating the camera and capturing her finding the deer, and I was real confident that we were going to do that. The whole trail, we were it was good blood. I mean, everywhere we looked, there was blood. If I got lost, Dad pointed me in the right direction. I mean, constant blood all the way down. Um, and then we got to the big puddle, and that's kind of where we were concerned. Um, not initially at first. We were like, okay, there's a big puddle of blood. Like, yeah, right. And right before that, we'd actually found the arrow. And, we had found and the it, arrow. Was, it was covered with blood. And we talked about it. We, we smelled it and didn't, didn't smell any kind of paunch. It was a darker red blood. And you actually questioned me, is that, is that, does that look like dark blood? And, but it was, it was heavy blood. It was a lot of blood. And then we found the puddle, and the puddle looked like it had had probably lung blood in it. There was some light within it and some bubbly. Um, Roy explained to me later that when blood is pooling back on itself, and that's probably where the deer was standing at one point or may have laid it down, but w when blood is pooling back on itself, it'll, it'll bubble up. Also, don't discredit yourself on your tracking ability. You've gotten really good at tracking. Um, there were several times... And I've got the audio from it. There were several times where you were saying, okay, here's this track. You were, you were tracking by tracks and not just by blood. So um, don't, don't discredit yourself on that. We, went, we decided to back out, went back to camp, and we were going to get a tracking party. And then we just decided, let's go ahead and call the dog. Let's get Roy out here. 
we were real confident still that we were just the dog was going to go he was going to get on the trail he was going to find the deer we thought it was going to be a short track but a few hours later we ended up having to give up on the trail and that was very disheartening i figured the dog's going to get to where we were and then just go straight to where the deer is now I was so confident that I was talking to Roy and his son-in-law, I believe. Yeah, John. Not even concerned. Like, I was very confident. Slowly, it just kind of kept taking a little while. You could kind of tell Roy was backing off a little bit from us, like, trying to figure things out on his own. And it was kind of disheartening slowly throughout the process. The longer it took, the recovery was getting um, less and less likely. Uh the bottom line is we didn't recover the deer it, it really honestly broke my heart it's yeah. i never thought that bow hunting would be hard but yeah, we, we, we were both extremely deflated really for the rest of the weekend and for the following week i can't really look at any single thing and say oh we shouldn't have done that um could we have done some things different very possibly the thing i learned is that it happens to everyone i mean even the best of hunters who hunt with us told me they were They've been through it. The worst shots have killed the deers. The best shots have not killed the deers. It just bow hunting. Most, if not all of us, if we bow hunt long enough, are going to experience something like this. And I think the one key point to it is I feel like we did, we exhausted every single effort we could to make sure to try to recover that deer. Um, We spent hours um, looking for the deer. Following the blood trail, we backed back out. We decided to go ahead and get the dogs in. We, we went ahead and paid for a dog to come out there. Um, unfortunately, the dog wasn't able to find it. We spent hours of the next day um, crawling through brush, flying the drones, looking for birds, everything that we possibly could to try to recover that deer. But the reality is sometimes it's just not going to result in a recovered deer. This is We've kind of talked our way through it. It's probably longer than what we wanted to be. We appreciate y'all joining us for those of you that are still here. Any parting words that you want to uh, include there, Hannah? I told Dad at the beginning of this, I really wanted to share this story for all the new hunters and all the young hunters who watch these videos and even the one the hunters that have been doing it for years. It's Absolutely. A, a good learning experience and it's not something we need to hide. It happens and it's okay yeah it's reality and that's what one people one one thing people tell me all the time is they appreciate that um we show reality and that's what we are will always strive to do we're always going to strive to promote bow hunting and the positives of bow hunting and and look there's we have spent a season making memories whether we shot a deer or didn't shoot a deer Hannah and i have spent a lot of time in a blind together this season and, uh, and, and had a great season. And we're not done yet. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below. Um, if you don't like it, you can hit the, the uh, thumbs down button. Hit it twice if you want to. But also leave a comment down. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Maybe some suggestions on what you think we should have done different. So anyway, be sure to leave those in the comments below. Again, thank you for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye, guys.